Hello and welcome to another virtual art lesson from the Round Hill Art Center. I'm Eric Scott and today we are going to be painting. Now you can really use any kind of paint, acrylic paint, craft paint. Uh, I'm going to use some watercolor paint. It's it's inexpensive, it's easy to use, It's it can be messy so you want to be careful of that. Um, but we're going to paint in a different way. We're going to use objects, we're going to use things and we're going to be stamping to paint. So find some different things that you can stamp with, uh, some things that you're not going to ruin if you get paint on them. Um, and when I share about materials, I'll talk about some of the things I'm going to use, but use anything that's going to allow you to put paint on it and to press it down onto the paper. So let's go ahead and talk about materials. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, let's talk a little bit, bit about materials. So I've got paper. This is just plain drawing paper, but any kind of thicker, heavier paper would work. Uh, printer paper is probably too thin. And as far as paint, I have watercolor paint, but craft paint or poster paint, temper paint, acrylic paint, any paint really will work because we're going to use the uh, the paint and put it on objects. So uh, I need something to put the paint on. So I have a paint brush and I have a water, I have a cup of water so that I can rinse out my paintbrush and then I have objects so th this painting is all about using objects to stamp with and so I've got um, some plastic containers these have been used a lot I save them and use them so you know hummus containers and little things from takeout and bottle caps and glue stick caps all those little caps and things work great for stamping I've got some bubble wrap <clears throat> so I've got some bigger bubble wrap and I've got some smaller bubble wrap and we'll be using that. I also have some scrap pieces of just plain corrugated cardboard. This is the cardboard that has the three layers and has kind of the zigzag paper in the middle. And I've got some string. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you ways that you can use some of this stuff. You, you, you can use anything that you can put paint on and press it or stamp it into the paper. So. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the plastic container. So I think I want to start with this nice big one. And I'm going to put the paint on the lip. That's the surface. That's where the lid would go. And I just want to take the paint and maybe I'm going to use a lighter color. So maybe this lighter yellow orange. And I'm just going to paint around. Because it's plastic, the paint might not stick super well right now. Uh, it, it might kind of might beat up as they say or it might not completely cover it but I just take it and I want to cover the lip I'm going to put my paintbrush down I don't want to rinse it out because I'm going to probably need to use it and then I can flip it upside down and put it with the paint down now I could just stamp with it like that but I like to take any of these round things and twist it and then pick it up and if I can see, if you see, I mean, that's not orange very much. It's more like a brown. That's because I already had some paint on there. So I probably should have uh, rinsed it off or wiped it off. But you know what? That's kind of kind of fun when you see how the paint kind of mixes together. So I'm painting more of that yellow orange on. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing. This time, oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I have a pile of paper here. And I meant to move some of it. So get that out of the way and then I can take this and put it upside down but this time let it go off the the paper it doesn't have to stay on the paper completely and that's why I like you know I have this painted surface my paint table um, you can always put some newspaper down if you don't want to get paint all over your table this can be kind of a messy process it's fun but it can be kind of messy so you do want to be careful of that and maybe I'll do another one Maybe do another one over here. Okay, and I don't always have to put paint on it in between each one. I can always stamp with it. It kind of has less paint, but it's kind of kind of cool for doing that. Okay, so once I'm done with that, maybe I'll pick a smaller one. Maybe I'll use this one here. And I think I'll use some red. And I do the same thing. I paint the lip, the, the part where the lid would go on. 
and then I can turn it upside down and do the same thing, just give it a little twist. And I can just do that wherever I want. And remember, I don't always, I don't have to put paint on it every single time. You can do that as much or as little as you want. I like to do it all over. Okay. All right, so that's given me some kind of cool things going on. Let's go ahead and turn to our bubble wrap. I want to use the big bubble wrap, okay? And I've already done this before, so there's some red paint on it. So let's go ahead and use that red paint again. And this time, what I want to do is I want to paint the bubbles. It doesn't, I, I really want the paint to be on top of the bubbles. I, it doesn't matter if the paint gets in between the bubbles. I don't have to paint every single bubble. And then I can turn it over and lay it down on the paper. But then in order to stamp, I have to press. So I press easy. Don't press super hard where the bubble's gonna pop. Just easy enough to let it press down. And I find sometimes with the big bubbles, you, you don't see a whole lot of the individual bubbles. Um, like this one's gonna turn out really well. I can see that's nice and dark. But I just press it easy for a few minutes, pressing all over, and then I can lift it up. And like I said, I can't see every single bubble, but it, it creates this really interesting texture. And if I want, I can lay it down over here. and then pick that up, okay? So I could keep doing stuff on this, but you know, that's a lot of water. So let me set that aside to dry. And that's why I like having multiple pieces. That's why I had to move them. So I'm gonna start with another blank one. And this time, maybe I'll do the little bubbles. Okay, so I've already used this one. It has some green on it. So let's go ahead and get some green paint. And the, I think the little bubbles, yeah, they probably show up better because they're easier to get more paint on it. So like I said, I don't have to paint all the bubbles, just a few, and then I can turn it over, lay it down. It's the exact same thing like I did with the big bubble wrap. I want to kind of press it, maybe rub it a little bit just to get the bubbles stuck to the paper just to really get the paint down. And then give it a couple minutes and then I can pick it up. And you can see there, I see those bubbles a lot more than I did with the big bubble wrap. Let's do the same thing. And I, I didn't even put any more paint on it, just kind of pressing it over here. And then picking that up. And so I have this pattern of the bubbles. So let's go ahead and turn to our, our uh, cardboard, okay? Actually, I actually have another piece that I wanna use. I've already used this. I don't know if you could see, I, there's a little bit of paint on there. Um, I'm gonna use the other side here. So I'm using the edge because of the corrugation, that little wavy zigzag line that's in, in between. That's the paper, that's the corrugation as they call it. So yeah, this is corrugated cardboard. And I think maybe I'll use this blue green. And I don't wanna have a lot of water, but I'm gonna paint the edge. And then I turn it over and I stamp with it. That didn't show up very well. I need to get a little bit more paint. Sometimes it takes a, a couple moments, a couple times of doing it. There we go. So what, what, what's happening is the lines of the cardboard show up. So each time I'm just putting a little bit more paint on it or I can stamp with it. If I want, I can put it into where the bubbles are. And I like to do this all over. I, don't, I just don't do it once or twice. I'm going to do it all over the paper. Okay. 
Okay. So that's one way I can use the cardboard. Another way of doing it is to take the cardboard, oops, my string got in the way, um, is to take the cardboard and I'm actually going to pull off one side of this cardboard. So I'm going to pull off this surface. So what I like to do is just very gently pull on one side. And then the only problem is that as I do this, it doesn't all come off. It's glued on. So there's glue that gets applied to these little bumps inside. And then the, it's just paper and gets glued on top. So I have these areas. Let me get that, rid of that. And that's why I like the pencil. Because I take the pencil and I stick in. And I kind of... And I gotta be careful not to stab myself. But then I can pull off each of these little pieces and pull all that off. Okay, and I could keep doing that. I have one here that, that's almost done. Okay, and so again, I just peel it. And if I can't get it all off, that's okay. So once I get most of it off, then I can take it and I can paint it. So this time maybe I'll use this darker blue here, swirl it around, get some paint, and I'm going to paint the bumps. And so notice how I kind of hold the paintbrush sideways, and that way the paint gets mostly on the bumps of the cardboard. I really just want to make sure I get a lot of the paint on there. And then I can turn it over and I stamp with it. Press it down easy so it doesn't get flattened. And so I get, get lines that are showing. Okay. And I paint it, get, paint it again. And then turn it over and stamp with it. And like before, I don't always have to put more paint on it. I can stamp with it several times and then turn it over and press it down and I could do that all over okay okay so stamping with the cardboard so I can really stamp with anything and I can even stamp with a piece of string so string I have a, a cotton string here it's not super thick but it's going to work really well um, if you don't have this you can use yarn or an old shoelace just anything that you can really get paint on it let's go ahead and see all right so this is a little bit drier let me go ahead and, and use this one so I like to flip them around a lot. So let's take this and I want to get paint on it. And the easiest way is to use the tray, the lid of my watercolor paint. Now if it's dirty, like this has a lot of paint in it, let me go ahead and I'm just gonna take some water and paint in it and then take my paper towel and just wipe it out, okay? So I think I'm gonna use some blue all right, so I take some blue and I paint blue into the lid. And then I can put my uh, string in there. And this is the hard part. Now I want to put more paint and more water. And I, I want to get the string soaking wet with the paint. So I just keep putting paint over top until the until it's all soaked in to the string. Now this is the really messy one. So you gotta be real careful. If you aren't real careful, you can end up splattering paint everywhere with this one. Okay, so then I can pick this up. If I can find the end of the string, that's that's really good. So I found the end of the string, and I just kind of want to stretch it out. And this is where it can get really messy. And then I'm going to lay it down. And it can loop-de-loop, -loop, okay? 
And so in order to stamp with it, I'm going to take my finger, but I'm going to use my fingernail. I'm going to press. And I press down on the string and I go all the way around. And then I pick it up. And then I can lay it down again. Okay, and then I do the same thing. I press it down. And then I can pick it up. And so I could do that probably a couple times. If I need to, I can put it back in the lid over here and I can get more paint. Okay. Um, so anyway, that, that kind of, um, well, no, it doesn't actually wrap it up because another thing I can do is I can paint with my fingers or with my hands. I know a lot of people like to do their hands. One thing with painting your hand though, it's going to stain. I, you can see I got paint all over my fingers. So if I do paint my hand, it's going to kind of stay there for a while. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, maybe I will use this purple. This is a blue violet. Let me take off my ring first. All right, so I'm going to do this really quickly. I want to have a lot of water and a lot of paint. And I just want to paint my hand really, really fast because I don't want the paint to dry. And you, you could just do this with your finger. But you want to paint your whole hand. Now, this is, this is non-toxic paint, so this isn't going to hurt me. But I do have to be careful because then my hand is messy and I can get I can get it on I can get paint all over the place. Alright, so once I get it painted over, like I said, I want to do it really fast so that the paint doesn't dry. And I turn my hand over and I stamp with it. And then I can pick it up. And then maybe I want to do it again. So I can, again I paint real quick. You gotta be quick so that the paint doesn't dry. And then maybe it's gonna be over here. Okay, maybe maybe I'll do it one more time. And then maybe I'm gonna do it over here. Right about there, I think. Okay, oh, and I can maybe do one more up here with my thumb. There we go. Okay. Now my hand's all wet. Take my paper towel, wipe it off. But there I have, it's kind of a messy, but it's a fun way of painting. So um, anyway, hope that you enjoyed it. All right, I hope that you had some fun using paint in maybe a different way. I mean, we're, we're just so used to painting in pictures, but now you know how you can use it to stamp with, to create images, to create paintings where you're putting the paint on an object like your hands or bottle caps or anything that you can stamp with and create some unique looking images. So I hope you had some fun and I'm so glad that you tuned in and remember, share with us, tag us so that we can see what you are creating. So thank you so much. And as always, happy creating. Mm -hmm.